We live in tumultuous times, the political world is in chaos, Brexit is causing upheaval, and Gordon Ramsay is telling people pineapple can't be on pizza. Disgusting! You tell him, Lucy. Ordinarily, we'd escape to the movies, where heroes rule supreme and good triumphs over evil, but it's not much better there. Yes, I am of course talking about Dominic Terrell's unexpected heel turn in The Fate of the Furious. We'll finally get the answers for why Dom has gone all evil this week, and to celebrate the release of The Fate of the Furious, we've put together a list of 8 fantastic Fast and Furious facts and theories. But before we get to that, remember to subscribe to GameSpot Universe while you're here. We're dropping hot videos on movies, TV, comics, anime and wrestling every day of the week. So be sure to hit that red button so you can stay up to date on all our nerdiest hashtag content. Anyway, here are 8 fantastic Fast and Furious facts and theories. Nailed it. My love of Terminator 2, aka the joint best sequel of all time, tied with The Mummy Returns of course, this is easily my favourite fan theory. YouTube's Min Jim and them propose that Dom Toretto is actually a Terminator. Yep, you heard that right. The head of the family is actually a cybernetic organism. Living tissue over a metal endoskeleton. I'm not sorry, and you're keeping that in. And man, I have bought into this theory hook, line and sinker. It started back in 2011. Universal wanted to reboot the Terminator with Fast Five's writer and director helming the project. It was thought to be a crossover of the franchises, but sadly fell through. That doesn't mean that some seeds weren't planted in the Fast franchise. Terminator-like seeds. Jim and them note that Dom has super strength, like the time he effortlessly lifts a 3,000 pound Lycan hypersport. He also seems to feel no pain, just like a Terminator. If you listen closely, you'll hear that when he gets hit by a crowbar, the sound effect is clearly metal on metal. He also straight up doesn't die. You know what else doesn't die? It doesn't feel pity, or remorse, or fear, and it absolutely will not stop, ever, until you are dead. Fast and the Furious Tokyo Drift isn't exactly the high point for the franchise, but it does stand out for one key reason. While it was the third film to be released, it's actually the seventh film in the series chronologically. And that's all down to this man. Sung Kang's hand was such a fan favourite in Tokyo Drift that to get around this tiny problem of his death... The producers made Fast and Furious 4 through 6 prequels. Time eventually catches up to poor old Han at the end of Fast and Furious 6, where it's revealed that it was Jason Statham that killed him all along. This chronological swap also gives us the reason for why Lucas Black visibly ages 9 years in the space of 30 seconds early on in Furious 7. Damn, living life a quarter mile at a time really took its toll on Lucas. I hope you're sitting down for this one because I'm about to blow your little minds. 2015's The Last Witch Hunter is actually a sequel to the Fast and Furious series. In The Last Witch Hunter, Vin Diesel plays Calder, a witch slayer that's tasked with keeping the peace between humankind and the wizarding world. Calder is 800 years old and the theory goes that at some point in his lengthy life cycle, he went by the name Dominic Toretto, the leader of a ragtag group of car thieves. The theory, which comes courtesy of Huffington Post, is based on the numerous similarities between Dom and Calder, one of which is their affinity for cool cars. At one point in The Last Witch Hunter, Calder actually says, I don't have friends, which is the start of an iconic Dominic Toretto line. Sure, it could just be a nod to the Fast and the Furious series, but what if this is a glimpse at what has become of Dom? His outlook on life many years after his FNF family have drifted off the mortal coil. When asked about the theory, The Last Witch Hunter director Breck Eisner said, I do like that, the idea of immortality. Dom is clearly immortal. I mean, those Fast and Furious guys don't die. They're superheroes now. So basically, Dom can't die and is living as an 800-year-old slayer in the future. It certainly would explain his ability to pull off superhuman feats like this one. Just 
a quick one, but there is a neat little Easter egg for fans of Point Break in the first Fast and Furious movie. And no, I don't mean the bit where Keanu Reeves goes Rah! in the sky. In Point Break, early 90s hair goals Tyler works in a restaurant called Neptune's Net. Now you can actually visit Neptune's Net if you happen to find yourself on Malibu's Pacific Coast Highway. And you know who did find themselves there? Dom and Brian in the first Fast and the Furious movie. So, there. I like this. <laughs> <laughs> um... Attack! <laughs> Okay, so this theory is a bit out there, we admit, but it still kind of applies. Johnny Angel over on Something Awful pitched the idea that the Fast and Furious franchise plays out like a Dungeons and Dragons campaign. The main meat behind this theory is about the huge escalation of action from the original Fast and Furious through to the sixth film and beyond. Angel states that Dom Toretto in Furious 6 isn't the same person as Dom Toretto in the Fast and Furious because he's leveled up like 5 to 20 something. He argues that the cars level up too, evolving from the simple drag race stunts of the original to pull off insane feats in Fast 5 and Furious 6. It's obviously not a direct adaptation of D&D, but more of an interpretation of how a D&D game plays out, and it's surprising how well the theory fits this escalating action of the Fast and Furious series. Plus it helps that Vin Diesel is already a massive D&D fan. Go on Vin, make it official. You want an adrenaline rush? It'll be too large. Right here, right now. What's it gonna be? For a movie mostly about cars, you'd think that most of the principal cast would know how to drive before they signed on. Well, guess what? Not all of them did. Michelle Rodriguez and Jordana Brewster both had to learn how to drive in order to keep their roles on the film. Jordana had to learn in New York City, which would be terrifying enough, but she was under pressure to pass her test, otherwise she'd be dropped from the film for insurance reasons. Michelle Rodriguez also learned how to drive in order to keep her role, but says that learning for the job meant that she picked up some bad habits, like speeding. While filming Lost, she was pulled over multiple times for speed offences and was even jailed for a hot minute for driving under the influence. It's also heavily rumoured that the DUI is the reason that she lost her role as Ana Lucia on Lost. Don't drink and drive, kids. I hope you're sitting down because I'm about to blow your little minds. What if Dominic Torello had a long lost brother and it was Richard B. Riddick? Dick Riddick. Okay, so this one isn't a theory as much as it's an interesting idea. With the escalating nature of the Fast and Furious movies, it's only a matter of time before Dom and the gang are leveraging the gravitational pull of planets to drift around space. But why would they even be up there? Well, in an interview with Uprox, Fast and Furious writer Chris Morgan was asked whether it could happen and although he didn't commit to the idea, he didn't outright say it couldn't happen. In fact, he posited the question, what if Dom's long lost brother, Richard B. Riddick showed up? And then he added, if we came up with the perfect thing and it made sense, it would be awesome. I don't know, Chris, seems like you come up with the perfect thing to me and it makes sense, so get on it. In the year 2017, it's kind of hard to think of a world without the Fast and the Furious. A world without Dom, Letty and The Rock flexing out of a cast seems inconceivable now, but pre-2001 it was just fact. Thank the V12 gods then for Ken Lee. Ken Lee! No, not that one. And his article Racer X, which tells the story of Rafael Estevez on his journey through the world of drag racing. According to director Rob Cohen, Racer X was the chief inspiration behind the original film, and as soon as he convinced Universal to make the film, the studio optioned the rights from Lee and the rest is history. Now that I'm back from the land of the moose, mice, meese, did we ever figure that one out? Thank you so much for watching that video all about the fast and the furious. If you like the video, make sure you hit the subscribe button, the like button, and comment down below. Now we've got some comments from last week's video, which I wasn't here for. I, was I will read a comment because I was here for it. I was present, not present, correct? Dilly dallying in Canada. Uh, we've got a comment here on YouTube from Montana Jr. who says, one of my favorite movies of all time, speaking about the mummy. Um, I used to watch it tons of times with my mom as a kid. You know what I used to watch with my mom as a kid? Nothing. Do you know what I used to watch with Tam's mom as a kid? Dad? <laughs>